What's up? What's up? What's up, my brothers and sisters in Christ? This is Minister B.J. Major, and I welcome you all to another glorious edition of the Sunday Word Report. And joining me today here on the Sunday Word Report is my sister in Christ, Miss Katusia Bella. Welcome to the Sunday Word Report. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be on here. I've always watched it, but never on it. So now I'm finally on it, so I'm excited. So today here on the Sunday Word Report, we're going to be discussing the importance of knowing your worth. And real quick, I'm going to open up real quick and then I'm going to let um, Katusia come in. Um, I want to go to Romans the 8th chapter and I want to look at verses 35 through 39. And for those who keep up with me, I, I talk about this scripture from time to time to kind of give, you know, give encouragement. Um... I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. My brothers and my sisters, something I constantly say a lot on social media is that you are more than what you think. Yeah. You know. Christ love God love you so much he sent his only begotten son to die for you and plus look at your life right now just look around you know don't worry about what you have done or what you currently are doing you are worth so much more than what you think be like apostle Paul put the past behind you put things behind you and press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus you continue to press towards heaven don't let nobody tell you otherwise as long as God is directing you, keep focused on him and do what you do. You are worth something. Don't ever settle for less. Don't ever settle just because so you can have something you can feel a certain kind of way. Because let me tell you, let me tell you this one thing. When it comes to life itself, the only person eternal is God. And the only thing eternal is is having a connection and relationship with God. Everything else is going to pass away at some point in life. So know your worth. Be in God. Let God direct your path. And I guarantee you, when you let God be the head, everything will come together. You just got to trust and believe in him and know you are worth the something. The scripture that you share are amazing. Actually, some of my favorite um, scriptures. And I think a lot of reason why people don't truly know their worth is because they don't know who God is. They don't mm -hmm. know their identity. And so if you don't know your identity, it's going to be impossible to know your word, to know what God is saying about you for the longest. And I always like to use myself as an example because I didn't know my word. I didn't even know that I was called. I didn't know that I can preach. I didn't know that I can open up my mouth because I truly did not know that I was worth it. I didn't know that I was worthy. But then when I started to um, get in the word of God, he said that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, that I am made in his image. So now when I begin to submerge my in him he began to reveal those things to me so if you're thinking oh my gosh I'm not worth it the things that I did in the past that's the reason why you feel like you're not worth it or you're not worthy because you went through those trials and tribulations that's the reason that you're worthy and worth it God trusted you with a testimony so your past is supposed to propel you into your destiny so a lot of us we don't know that so because we are focused on our past. We're focused on, oh my gosh, maybe I had an abortion. If you're like me and you had the abortion, or if you're like me, you was in the toxic relationship, you're saying, oh, I'm not worth it. God can't use somebody like me. So I have to settle for this and I have to settle for that kind of job, or I have to settle for that kind of relationship. And God is like, no, you don't have to settle. The reason why you went through the things that you went through is because I am trusting you with a testimony. So for me, when I begin to know my identity is when I begin to know Christ. 
So when I begin to know that I was worthy, that I would not settle in a relationship, I would not settle in a job, I would not settle in a friendship, is because now I begin to know who God is. And if you don't know your identity, you don't know what he says about you, and you don't have that one-on-one relationship with him, you're never going to know who you're, that, that you're worthy. You're not going to know that you're worthy, so you're going to keep taking people that are going to come in your life abuse you on top of abuse that are going to speak ill of you and things of that sort and then you're going to be like okay why is this happening to me why am i going on over the cycles and back in the same cycle because you don't know your identity it's all from the beginning the beginning is important because if you don't have the beginning you can't get to the end a lot of people trying mm -hmm. to get to the end but they don't have the beginning so the beginning is essential for you to say okay in the beginning this is what the word of god says about me so because this is what he says about me, he knows the number of hair on my body. He knows me. He knew me in my mother's womb. That is essential. And every time I think of verses like that, it kind of like something jumped in my belly and in my spirit. Why? Because God was thinking about me way before I was thinking about him. So now, why would I settle to be in a job that God didn't call me to or to be in a relationship that God didn't call me to just to say that I have something? And just like you mentioned before, don't don't stay in a situation to say that you have something, but know who you are, know that you are worthy, know that you are worth it, know that God chose you, he equipped you, he qualified you. So when you begin to know these things and you begin to walk in your anointing, you're going to be like, oh, uh, uh, this is not what the word of God says. So I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and you're going to be able to keep it moving. You can't come up to me, walk up to me and tell me anything that you want, because if it does not align with the word of God, I will not. And, and one thing of I find interesting about a lot of folks, I know a lot of people have experienced this, is that God is speaking to people, but they don't know how to react to it. God is speaking to so many. One thing about God, his word would not come back void. Never. I remember, and, and plus another thing is that I heard a pastor say something a few weeks ago. He said, when God speaks to you, when he tells you to do something, nine times out of 10, it's going to be something that don't make 100% sense. You know, yeah. for example, last year when I was preparing to get my book published, I didn't have, you know, enough money to, you know, put into this. You know, I was like, God, I know you're telling me that I need to have this book published, but my everything is not looking you know cool right now you know money ain't looking right you know it just lord i don't know how <laughs> are you are you sure you want me to do this but see I, I was reminded his word will not come back void and he had already spoken to me telling me now was the time go ahead and do it and a year later i'm about to publish my second book and the first book is it's just you know growing to the point it's reaching overseas so we got to listen to God. You know, some of you right now may be at a point where God is speaking to you, but you don't know how to react. Just, I challenge you to just step out on faith. And the one thing about faith is that even if you just have little faith the size of a mustard seed, mm -hmm. that small faith has the power to do big and wonderful things. But you just got to step out on faith. Some of you may be in a relationship and you know you need to be out of that relationship. You just trust in God. You step out of that relationship and you press towards God. Don't be worried about what you're going to lose. Just think about what you're going to gain. Mm -hmm. If you may be in a friendship and that friendship is causing you to fall back into some sins that you're trying to get over, you cut that friendship off and you look to God. Just mm -hmm. know you are worth something. God has something for you. God is calling. In your ear, in your mind, mm -hmm. in your heart, in your soul. You just step outside of self. Deny yourself. Die to that flesh. And you carry your cross and you walk it out with Jesus. You are worth something. You are here for a purpose, for a reason. The first step to me to finding your God-given identity, you got to step outside of self. You can't do it while you're in self. You gotta, you yeah, gotta step outside. You said, just to piggyback of what you said, it's just, it's so profound. Um, mm. And sometimes God is talking to us, and we think that He's not talking to us. And sometimes, half of the time, I want people to understand that when God gives you a dream and He gives you a vision, 
if you can do it yourself, it's not a God stream. I'm going to say that again. And I like to repeat myself. Mm. If you follow me on social media, I do that a lot only so that you can understand what I'm saying. If God gives you a dream and he gives you a vision and you can do mm. it yourself, it's not a God's vision. It's not a God dream because it's going to take the impossible for it to be done. Just like my brother just mentioned that God told him to do to write a book. The finances was looking crazy. He didn't know how he was going to do it. But God, because it's his will, it's his bill. It's his will, it's his bill. So when you begin to understand that it's his will, it's his bill, then guess what? God, I heard you. I know you told me to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trust in your word. Have most of my time doing events and conferences. I'm operating in faith. All I heard God say, go and do. And you know what? It's my job to be obedient and do. So that means that if he tell me to do it, then he's going to provide for it. All I have to do is take the initial step. But a lot of us, we're not hearing God. We're not hearing God because we're still stuck in situationship. We're not hearing God because guess what? We don't know the voice of God. My sheep know my voice and they follow. So who voice are you following? That's really truly the question. Who are you following? Is it your friend? Is it your mama, your cousin, cousin, your auntie? Or is it truly God? Because if it's not God, then nothing in your life is going to shift. Nothing, in, you are not going to walk in purpose. You're not going to know your worth because you are following other people's voices instead of God's voice. So every day when you wake up, you need to submerge yourself in his word. You need to learn what he says about you so that you can have the confidence to do what he's calling you to do. Without him, it is impossible. Without him, I'm going to say it again, it is impossible to walk in your purpose. It is impossible for you to know your word. It is impossible. You have to have a relationship with Christ. And when he gives you a dream and a vision, trust him enough. Trust him enough to... to I'm sorry, trust him enough to believe that it's going to happen for you. Trust him enough to believe that, hey, God, if you gave it to me, I'm worthy enough. I'm worthy enough. And a lot of time I was just talking to God. We don't believe in God for real, for real. We say we believe in God until we're being tested. We don't believe in God. If God tell you to write a book, you're trying to figure out how you about to do it. No, 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 no. If God told you to write a book, that's his job to figure out. All you need to do is begin to write the book. If God told you to start to do a conference, all you need to do is begin to figure out who you're going to bring to the conference and allow him to do the rest. But we're trying to put our hands in it. And God is like, I need you to let me be the driver. But no, 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 no. You don't want to let him be the driver. So that's why you don't know where you're worthy. You don't know what to do. You just got to step outside your Self, step outside your comfort zone. If you're not, if you're, you know, in your comfort zone, you're not going to get to where you need to be. You got to step outside of your comfort zone. Just like, you know, she just said, you know, where, you know, she's doing conferences, you know, she just, you know, she's following, you know, God, you know, she's stepping outside herself. And one thing I can relate to about that is like, even with the Sunday Word report, you know, um, God spoke to me late. 2017 early 2018 to start having co-hosts on here you know i was like lord i don't know how to do that i don't know i don't know how that's going to work out i just continued to talk to him about it and it, you know over the past number of months i have had people on here and it's amazing let me tell you something god did the holy spirit just gave me something your gift your call and whatever god is is trying to reveal to you it's not just to help you it's to benefit somebody else Pretty much. It's to help somebody else. It's never about you. And I tell people that all the time. What you went through has nothing to do with you. It's it's about the people that gonna know Christ because of you, the people that you're going to encounter. So your book wasn't even for you. Your book was for the people that were overseas. Your book was for the people that's gonna need that word of encouragement. So you might think that you're encouraging yourself, but honestly, you're you are sent to be that encourager. You are sent to go ahead and help those people. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm I I I I. You like you said, you need to remove yourself from the situation and say, you know what, God, I know that you have given me this thing like for me and I use myself a lot because that's all I know is myself and I went through the things that I went through but because I went through the things that I went through now I can minister to a sister now I can minister to a brother and tell them you know if God can deliver me if God can do this for me imagine what he can do in your life and people are getting breakthrough for that because half the time the person that's sitting in your left or your right is going through the same thing that you're going through but you're so stuck in self you don't realize that you could have been speaking life to that person to make sure that they don't commit suicide but because you're so consuming what you're going through you don't understand that God was trying to use you in that situation so we need to be careful in this season 
to make sure that we're listening to the Holy Spirit, that we're listening to the voice of God, because you truly can miss out on your blessing. You truly can miss out on the person that you're supposed to be helping because you're so stuck on self and you don't understand that God was trying to keep you in that situation. So, you know, basically to sum all this up, y'all, you know, you all have a purpose, but it's up to you mm -hmm. to pursue what God has for you. You're going to have to have your own pursuit of God for yourself. Like I, I mostly say this all the time. I have a co-host. Even I say, you know, I'm here by myself. You know, we could be here all night, all day, telling, giving you all advice, telling you all scriptures, you know, telling you all these things. But you're going to have to stop looking at everybody and everything and start looking at yourself. It's not what that person is doing, what that, the other person is doing. It's about you. You got to say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh it's Lord, me, oh standing Lord. in the need of prayer. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, I just posted a testimony on social media recently, and my mind went back to when I was a teenager. It's like when I was going through my own issues with depression and suicide, it's like I was pointing a finger at everybody, but then I didn't realize it's how, until I was a young adult. It was, you know, even though, yes, people were giving me headaches and giving me problems, but at the end of the day, it was me holding me back. That's exactly what I say. It, it was me. It was never them because nobody have that much authority and power over you. You know, so for yes. me, it wasn't it wasn't them. I don't blame anybody. But because of them, I'm here because of them. I can say, hey, I'm releasing a book because of them. I can say I'm having these conferences. If I was never hurt, if I was never broken, if you never spoke about me, if you never betrayed me, I wouldn't pray as hard as I would. I wouldn't become an intercessory prayer. I wouldn't do these things because I would have been just fine. You get what I'm saying? That's right. Everything mm -hmm. you are going through right now, it's very necessary. God can use your mistakes. He could turn your mistakes and turn them into diamonds, could turn them into gold. Yo, let me tell you something. Like I said, you're worth something. Know your worth. If you don't know your worth, now is the time to start, you know, trying to discover, you know, how much you are worth, you know, your true worth, you know. And one, th one thing I love about God is that he's a God. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and to just forgive and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. He's a forgiving God. He's more of a God. He's more of a God than a second. You know, he's not just a God of a second chance. He's a God of another chance and another mm -hmm. chance and another chance. Mm -hmm. Stop looking. Stop looking at your past. Stop looking at what you don't have and work with what you got. You know. Period. period. And I just um, wanted to really say, because I do a lot of events and conferences and stuff like that about work you know, worth the wait. And, um, and the reason why it's not because it's something cute to say, you are truly mm -hmm. worth the wait. And why? Because Christ died on the cross for you. He didn't die for you to suffer from depression. He didn't die for you to sit here and be suicidal. That's not the reason he died so that you can live. He died so that you can live. So I bind and rebuke every spirit of depression over you up. Any spirit that is trying to take suicidal spirit, I bind that and rebuke that and send it back from the pits of hell because you are worthy. So you need to get to that point in that oneness with God and say, God, I am worthy. I am worth the way. So whatever it is that you have for me, I'm going to accept what it is that you have for me. I'm not going to speak ill of myself. And as a man, think it so. See, you need to begin to think positive. You need to begin to wash yourself in the word daily. So that you could be a reflection of Christ. Because what it is what what is it that you're washing yourself daily with? Are you washing yourself with the songs? Are you washing yourself with a certain type of television? Or are you washing yourself with the word? Because sometimes when you're going through something, you need to pick up your Bible. Or sometimes you need to cry out. If, even if you can't read a word, but you're not picking up your Bible. You're not in your word. So now, of course, you're going to be suicidal. Of course, you're going to want to do these things. Because why? You're not washing yourself in the word. So to, you are worth the wait. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God called you his own. You need to walk and you need to go forth and know who you are and who you are. You are you are a child of a king. Your daddy is a king. That's it. You, you are a victorious creature saved by a victorious and risen Savior. And that risen and victorious Savior was sent by a living and victorious God. You are worth something. You, Your daddy is a king. He's a king. So don't stop messing around with these. For my ladies, stop messing around with these bojos. Stop messing around with these men that don't, that don't want y'all. 
you know, and thinking that that's all you can do when God is trying to send you a Boaz, but he can never send you Boaz if you're still entertaining Bojo. And I say this all the time because it's essential for us to know, aside from salvation, the person that you marry is going to be the second most important thing because that person could either make you or break you, but because you don't think that you're worthy, because you don't think that you can do better you stay in a toxic situation you stay in a toxic friendship whatever it may be because you don't think that nobody wants you the devil is a whole liar because yes somebody wants you the person that god has for you so you need to let that counterfeit go that counterfeit job that counterfeit friendship that counterfeit relationship and even if in a season it's just you and god you better walk with god that's the only that's the best person to know because i'm rocking with jesus I know that's right. And fellas, she may be fine as wine, but if she don't pray and she ain't, you know, don't have that connection with the Lord, you better turn the other direction. Exactly, better rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Cast, she can't cast no demon, bro. Y'all gonna have me preaching on here, and I, I don't even. We ain't got time for that right now. We gonna have to have um cat back on here talking about more like that. I, I need to have her back on here because y'all, this this is a powerful woman of God. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. Woo. Y'all gonna have me but, um, preach in the word, but we gonna yeah. we gonna save it for next time because we got next time coming and we gonna be having a talk with y'all, okay? Because this channel right here is gonna grow because my brother is doing it. So and I'm a okay. Oh, the Holy Spirit, I thank you for this Holy Spirit. So for a lot of y'all that just passed my brother page and don't even like, don't even subscribe. Y'all gonna, hey. gonna wish one day. Y'all gonna wish one day. Y'all gonna wish one day. Y'all was Woo. connected with this man of God. Because some of y'all, y'all looking at numbers. You don't understand when y'all in the midst mm. of a prophet. Y'all don't understand when y'all in the midst of somebody great. So y'all gonna need to get it together because y'all focus on numbers. And y'all don't, you're not, y'all just scroll. And I'm gonna need y'all to scroll back up and go ahead and like and comment and hear what this man of God is saying. Because oftentimes in this generation, we so focus on numbers. And let me tell you, I said, that's somebody you need to know. That's somebody you need to be connected to. So you're not connected to him. And he he give me all y'all word. That man be preaching, but y'all don't be listening. And I'm and that's all I got to say. But y'all gonna wish y'all knew him. Period. That's all I'm gonna say. And I'm God don't lie. So if he put something in my spirit, that means there's something, there's a shift that's getting ready to happen. And if y'all not part of the shift, then baby, you done missed the bus. Okay, don't be texting him, talking about, don't be trying to slide in his DM. Oh, can I be? No, no, because you can't even support the brother. No Lord problem. have mercy. No, okay, so keep it moving. But I'm going to tell y'all, be careful. Be careful how you treat a prophet of God. Be careful. That's all I'm saying, bro. I'm, I'm done, because they're going to have me out here preaching. Oh, my God. My God, my God. Mm -mm. Y'all be careful. I feel the Holy Spirit moving right, right now. That's I gotta keep it together. I we we gotta finish this out right now because <laughs> we gotta finish this out. Ooh, okay. Y'all in the midst um, of an author, a preacher, but y'all playing. Mm. Yeah, I encourage everybody to go follow um, her on Instagram and Facebook. All her, I got all her information down in the description box here on YouTube. Go keep up with her because like i said this 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 woman of god she is she is no joke <laughs> i'll say that Ooh, but um first um we're gonna end it off right here but i just want to use these words from a song um most of you all have heard fantasia you know seeing this song over the last probably a year or two mm -hmm. these words speak so much i am who i am today because god used my mistakes oh i love that song he worked them for my good like no one else ever could. ever could. God told me to tell you it was necessary. Ooh, so I just got some chills. Hallelujah, God. Now, let me say that one more time. The Holy Spirit just told me to say it one more time. I am who I am today. Because God used my mistakes. Yes, God. He worked them for my good. Like no one else ever could. God told me to tell you. It was, it was necessary. necessary. My God, it was necessary. Those tears, Woo! those broken hearts, yeah. the time the money wasn't acting right, the it time you just necessary. wanted to pull your hair out, it was all 
your That's abuse so was necessary. The rape was necessary. The abortion was necessary. It was necessary. My abortion was necessary. My abuse was necessary because it would have never burnt something out. I would have never been able to do what I'm doing if it was not necessary. It was necessary. So believe me not, and I'm going to say like them Jamaicans, believe me not. It was necessary. It was all necessary for where God's getting ready to take you. You are a global. You are global. And I just speak that against my brother right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just thank you, Lord God, for this man of God. We just thank you for what you're getting ready to do in his life, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you would enlarge his territory, oh God. And I just pray the prayer of Jabez, oh God, over his ministry, oh God, over his life, oh God. This is a changing, a powerful changing movement, mm. oh God. So we just say thank you. We say thank you for what you're getting ready to do, Lord God. Open the floodgates of heaven, oh God. Open the floodgates of heaven, oh God. Open the floodgates of heaven, oh God. Open doors, oh God, that no man can shut. And shut doors that no man can open. God, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. We cancel and dismantle every assignment yes, from the enemy, Lord God. And we know, Father God, that you are arranging, oh God. You are arranging, oh God. Ordain, oh God, mentorship, oh God. Ordain opportunities, oh God. His book is global, oh God. He is a bestseller in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, Father God, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard of the things that you have for him, oh God. So we bless you for this man, oh God. We bless you for this powerful movement that he is starting, Lord God. So we say thank you, Lord God. We say thank you for his obedience, oh God. Use him in a mighty way, Lord God. Use him, oh God. Use him, oh God, for your glory, oh God. Strip him of anything that is not of you, oh God. Send him the people, oh God, that is going to take him to the next level, oh God. Continue, Lord God, to have him, oh God. Keep him and hide him under your bosom oh god i just thank you for my brother oh god and just have i that way lord god and we seal this prayer oh god with the blood of jesus hallelujah god hallelujah god in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus you are worthy god my god Mm. Mm -mm -mm. if you are unsaved right now i'm gonna extend this invitation to christ amen um don't let this, don't click off this video today if you have not accepted Christ into your life. You are Amen. so much more than what you think. You are worth something. Amen. And now it's the time. The first thing you need to do in order to find your worth is to accept Jesus Christ into your life. Because having that connection with him will reveal so much more to you. It's more than just shouting and giving him praise. It's about having an experience mm. and a Amen. relationship Amen. with him. Don't just settle just to have an ordinary relationship with Jesus. Let Amen. Jesus take you out of this world. Let him take you to a place you thought you would never go before. My God. See, let me tell you something. Having a relationship with Jesus is so much more than a Sunday morning. It's so much more than just singing and shouting and, and, and doing your own kind of dance. Mm. It's about an experience Amen. with a powerful powerful savior a powerful man who robbed the grave of his of its victory who stood up and had all power rose from the dead had all power in his hand jesus is still living today and he wants to save you in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost just message me contact me if you want to accept jesus as your savior i will pray with you i will pray for you right now say your own prayer of salvation i'm not going to say repeat after me you confess your sins and you talk to the father on you for yourself yeah. If you need help, like I said, I will help you. I will help you find a church. I will help you in any way I can. But don't leave this video if you have not accepted Amen. Christ as your Savior. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Ghost. And the Holy Spirit. I just want to thank Katusia once again for being with me here today on the Sunday Word Report. And she just don't know how much that impacted me a lot because I'm I'm very transparent. Before I got on here today, y'all, to do to take this vlog, I was going through so much today. Um it's just with elevation, there are different things that's happening during that elevation. That's it. And, and you know, it's just I was struggling by saying, Lord, I'm gonna do this today. I'm gonna do this. You are telling me to do this, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do do it with the praise of my heart and I'm gonna do it because there's somebody that needs this. So um, thank you, woman of God, for letting the Lord use you today here on the Sunday Word Report. Thank you. Woo, okay, y'all. Well, 
we she's gonna be back trust and believe she's gonna be back because the lord just revealed something with me so um get ready you know to see her again in the near future i thank you all so very much for tuning in. you have anything else you want to say before we um um go i on? just really want to just let the people know that they're worthy they're worth it and to trust the process trust the season season doesn't last always so just believe in God, believe in yourself and whatever it is that you're going through and you need somebody to talk to, like he said, reach out to him, let him know, allow him to pray for you. There is power in prayer. So if don't go through it alone, don't just skip the video and listen to what you want to listen to, but really take the time to to um, seek wise counsel, seek a man of God. He might not have it all figured out all together, but none of us do. We're just trying to be perfect in him. So if you need prayer, seek, seek somebody. If it's not him, you're not going to seek somebody for a prayer so that they'll be able to help you. And really, that's all I have to say. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on this. Amen. And like I said, I'm going to put all her information down in the description below so you can follow her. Please follow her. I repeat, follow her because she's like i said she ain't no joke and support her ministry she got a very powerful ministry um you want to talk about that a little bit before we go because I, I want i want people to know about that <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i guess um it's just it's called voices of purity my line is purity is dope um, i'm just an advocate for purity i don't just preach about purity i preach about god i preach about everything um and just god took some someone like me can anything good come up from Brooklyn? Well, guess what? It's me. So, um, yeah, just follow if you can. If not, too, I still love you. I'm praying for you. That's pretty much it. This is not about me. This is all about him and the word. So, if you follow, that's cool. If you don't follow, too, that's cool. But one day you're going to know us. Right, bro? That's right. That's right. Next edition of the Senate Word Report will be on the fourth Sunday. So, attend until then, this is Minister Major and... Miss Katusia, I love that name, Katusia. Signing off, telling you to stay great, stay safe, be blessed. Bye bye.